Kong Tong is one of the village that I've always felt at home to, you know, to just walk around, to just see how people work and how people interact with each other. During my master's, I was doing on my research paper on the evolution and the origin of Kasur Yao Bay. Kasur Yao Bay, from the name itself, Sur means a tune, and Yao Bay means something which is coming from the depth of a mother. So yeah, Sur Yao Bay is yeah, it's that tune which is coming from the depth of a mother's heart. When the child is like always in the mother's hand or maybe in the mother's bag where they used to you know, carry the, the child in the bag. Any tune which comes out of her when she's holding and looking at the child, that becomes the name of that child. That was her name just now. We're simple, no? You can call her Coo Coo Coo. That's her name. So, people are picking up Noah. Coo Coo. Coo Coo. Coo Coo. Coo Coo. Coo Coo. Coo they have regular names when they come to the city, they use the names. The Suryao Bay is more like a house name or a nickname. They work in the valley, down there in the valley. So because of the distance, they cannot call them by the name itself. So they just, uh, you know, they just hum the tune or they, they are cooing the, the tune. So that that is like the response for distance calling. So that the person above also will hear that this person has responded and he will come. So ang sita kate ngayo bay jong pi. Ah, ready, ready. Kasro ngayo bay, kasro ngayo bay jong pi. Suru bay. Lele, 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 lulu, 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 punta. Kata kate ngayo bay jong pi. They have like a, a nickname where you, they just use like two to three syllables to, you know, to, for a tune. But they have a long, like a very long name where like it's a, you know, it's a, it's a musical tune. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Dala Riti Gretel Khanayar. I am a singer-songwriter from Shillong and presently I am self-employed. I teach theory for music and I am a full-time performer. I have a foster mother who's taking care of me since I was a kid and by my own parents at the same time. It's, yeah, it's uh, very heartwarming. It's very, uh, I, I, I get that feeling of, uh, you know, feeling wanted. They're both people who always inspire me, who've always motivated me to follow my dreams. But I never thought that I will be studying music. After my bachelor's, I went for admission for my master's in Martin Luther Christian University, mm. Shillong. Bumblebee, 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 bumblebee. I feel myself more when I sing. You know, I, I really can feel live when I sing because there was nothing left after the tragic incident happening in the family. There was no life for me at all. It was in 2017. It was like a heavy rainfall at that time in Shillong. There's an old tree near the governor's house and it broke and it fell. So it happened to like, you know, it fell on the car where she was sitting. Um, 
we lost her. She did not survive. Maybe that was her day. <laughs> I spent most of my childhood with my sister who passed away. We were like studying together, always going to school together, doing stuff together. I have a song, a tribute for her. It's called Jinkan Mao. I remember a day before I wrote that song is the day I had a dream about her. She was telling me in my dream, why don't you let go, move on, I'm in a better place. You move on and you, you do whatever you love in your life and I'm going to be here always by your side. So I remember every single bit of my dream and I was straight away taking my diary and I penned down everything. After the release of that song, Chicken Mao, I was always inspired to do another song, do another song. <laughs> During my data collection and my field trip, my field visit, I find it very intrigued with how the people out there, the lifestyle of the people, and it's a very prosperous village. One of the most famous things that will produce is honey and they also do a lot of uh, broom cultivation. During the summers it used to, you know, because of the air and everything, used to grow for the whole farm and then it grows by itself. The only thing they're doing is taking care of it while they're growing. When the season is there for cutting, they cut it and after they dry it, they put it in a bunch and go and sell it to Sora or maybe they go and sell it to Punoslao, sometimes to the city, to Shillong. From last year to now, they've been using cars and like, you know, there's like some transport is coming. But before that, they used to go by foot for six to seven hours. And the people who take this will make the broom, will, you know. From each house, they get around uh, 1,000, 2,000 kgs. They can do it. They can so the one she just recited just now, doo, 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 is the name she used to call her husband. In the olden days, when she's calling her husband, by his name, it sounds a little bit, uh, you know, disrespectful. So by creating a tune, by having a naming tune, so they can just call them with the tune. Oh, <laughs> How to hunt? Little, That's her son's name. <laughs> Actually, she forgot and she was like trying to get back the memory. The <laughs> Did she cut no yak yabra or serial bay? So that is how she used to call her. Call her mother in law. No, she's telling me that she's taking care of her the whole day. When she's hungry, she wakes up, she eats, and when, she, when she's full, she's just sleep. <laughs> Okay. He was not born in this village, so he doesn't have like a, you know, he doesn't have that Surya Bay, so the, the tuning name. So, yeah.
my band, I would say uh, we've been friends first. Someone is a friend of someone, that is how we met. We had similar ideas, similar concepts and uh, we had a similar kind of taste in music. So uh, eventually that kind of grew and we, we ended up working together more and more, more and more. Till finally we decided to make our band official. The best thing about my band is all of them are graduate musicians. Three of us have uh, been awarded as Young Talented Artist Award for her excellence mm -hmm. in We were growing with folk music. We, we, we had that thing with folk music and how we connect with each other was also folk music. Folk was something which let us be together, con that connect us. As a band, we, uh, yeah, we normally play the Kasi folk music. Even though we're using Western instruments, we try to incorporate our traditional music and fuse it along with that. Duitra has four strings and two strings are actually tuned in the same uh, in the same tone, in the same note. The thickest string, the biggest string is uh, the maternal uncle who is usually the head of the family in our culture and the other two strings which are tuned in the same note are the parents, the mother and the father and the last string which is the highest string is, uh, uh, is the string which is meant for the children. So. These strings play together in a rhythm, in a, com creates a complete harmony, which is a, a family. All the members of the band are male, you know. She's the only female and she's doing the vocals. And she's doing a great job of being lead vocals and also, you know, being as a leader of the band. It's me who has to grab the, you know, the, the audience attention. I have, I have to speak to them louder with music. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Dalariti, uh, in the Khasi dialect, it means to uh, preserve your own culture, to take care of your own culture. You can go as a solo artist, Dalariti, or you can go with the band also as Dalariti. So that Dalariti is like an identity of the band. As a leader, she's, she's really good. I really admire that about Dala because she knows the rules and sometimes here and there she tries to bend the rules and she does it with great confidence. It's quite important the men kirkroy rkhesadhai that means we have a lot of uh, you know betel nuts and everything that we use in our culture there's a lot here so and even the old people are using it and they are like eating it with joy eating kwai with joy kashun ha utampo kita thmejung ipin sa that means the lime the lime no that they they used to put in the in you know you know the betel nut leaf is a sign of telling us that this is our roots when a person gives you a piece of betel nut and betel leaf, it is considered a, a kind of an offering, a peace offering. The pride of the Kasi. This song, it talks a lot about uh, the different aspects about our culture. Weaving basket and the, the bamboo band, the bamboo where we used to crush the, you know, the betel nut where all the people in the village are using. And we have one uh, sling bag, it's called the yarong and they'll keep all the stuff they need to carry to the paddy field. And it also talks about the Khasi's love for nature and how we protect and preserve nature, how we uh, take care of the, our surroundings, try to keep it as clean as possible. There will come a time where we'll not see these things being practiced. So it'll be, that will be the saddest day of our life that uh, our children will not see, our future generation will not see this anymore. So I was requesting the people to please Please, uh, you know, conserve it, try to protect it, try to retain it, yeah. The title of the song is Thmei Ban Pinsa. So Thmei is roots and Pinsa is to conserve, to protect, to retain. So this song is like to retain, to conserve and to protect our own roots. <laughs> A 
tell you anything more <laughs> that's it for now <laughs> you come back next time and know more about me <laughs>